revolution will not be televised. The revolution is now. Big bad loss. Pushing the bay, motherfucking dot com. Pushing the bay TV. If you ain't with it, then get with it. We gonna push the bay all the way to LA, and we gonna make things happen. So keep watching, cause it do get popping. You know who it is, man. It's your big uncle Ray Love in the building, and I done brought the bay all the way down here to LA to see my young cuz. He's doing it real, real big. Tell him what your name is, man. What you do? Oh man, my name is Young Dre The Truth, man. Uh, um, I'm a recording artist. And amongst other things, man, I'm trying to just, I'm a multimedia artist, but uh, I get out, you know what I mean? Tell me what your affiliation with the Bay is. Well, man, other than Ray Love, and then Mac Mall, and Tupac, and E-40, and everybody else, Mike Mosley, and everybody else, uh, my mother's from my mother's from Oakland, so I, I got a large amount, a lot of roots out of the O, and uh, you know what I mean? I got a lot of fam there. I was there as a child, living a little bit. And uh, just coming back, like really when I came back uh, in the 90s, really the 80s I was there as, as a child. And I came back in the 90s, the early 90s, uh, clicked up with uh, with Layla and uh, you and Maul and everybody else. And we had a tight little camp, 93, 94, 94, 95, 96. Uh, at them time, we always getting deals and everything. And uh, it was just trailblazing at the time. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, man, that was, that was big. That was the big mob movement in the Bay. That was my generation. And, you know, after the, the late 80s, big game, uh, D game thing, we had our mob movement. And you was there in the beginning. That's the, the reason why Pushing the Bay really came down here to talk to you is because I wanted to get all the founders of the Bay and the dudes that was really there in the beginning and had something to do with it. And so that's why I came to see you. What was the first, what was the first, um, what was the first music from the Bay, that rap music that you really dug, you really felt you got down with? I mean, man, it's so much. I mean, of course. I mean, too short, of course. I mean, you know what I mean? I mean, you know, we can say that off the gate, but uh, just really coming and, and really I'm downplaying, like, really my connection with the Bay because most people, even if you talk to a lot of people in the Bay that, that don't fully know, they'll be like, oh, Young Dre from the Bay? Right. You know, and they have to say, no, Young Dre from L.A., but it's the Bay is really my home. You know what I mean? It's one of my homes. So as, as I'm a hood national cat, hood national, our Pac was pushing thug life, I'm hood national. Uh -huh. I, I rep in anybody from the struggle in any hood worldwide because I, I traveled from different places and went to Paris and Spain and London and seen people in the struggle like us but as far as the Bay like music wise short of course but coming down and really hanging with you and Maul and E-40 and being a part of all, all that, that that early music when the game honestly to me was more pure before the oversaturation was happening and before even Master P had a look I remember Master P was giving me t-shirts you know right. what I mean I, God bless that brother because he's getting it you know what I mean right. and, and I'm yeah. I'm proud of him, but I remember me and E40. 40 was working on in a major way album. He just did the deal with uh with uh with Jive. And uh we was at uh one little Indian, no Live Oak, I think, studios or one little Indian studios in uh in Berkeley. And uh I remember there's a skit on there with 40's like, I'm finna get some pussy, and he's shaking his keys and it's a dog barking. Right. Funny thing, that's a real pit bull in the in the in the background too. But I remember we had just left LA, Pac did his verse. We was in the studio with uh me 40, Pac, Mike Mosley, a bunch of cats, but uh but I remember coming back to the bay and uh and just really my point is just being a part of the grassroots of uh, a lot of the, a lot of the pioneer people who really was factors in the bay you know what i mean really being a part of that in the early 90s you know what i mean even before the mid 90s and that's special to me you know what i mean on a level and not on some sucker sucker shit on some real shit to say that i was there you know right. what i mean so yeah. that that's what i mean by that you know? how do you how do you feel about the the change like uh the hyphy movement the 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 new music that's coming out of the bay I mean, man, in the last few years. I got love for, for, for change in general. Like everything I don't agree with, but I still respect it because it's my people's is involved. So, you know what I mean? That's like even like Mac Dre is somebody who I got a lot of respect for. I remember when Mac Dre got out, I would talk to him on the phone when we'd be on Tuolumne. And uh, Dre was in the pen and uh, Kyrie and everybody, they was they just finishing your album. You know what I mean? I remember we uh, and Maul's that record was done and everything. And Dre was getting ready to come home. So when we used to speak on the phone, I remember he came to the park. We was in the crest. I remember I stuck my hand out to him and I was like, hey, I'm, and he grabbed me and hugged me. He was like, I know who you are, young Dre. You know what I mean? But them kind of things, I remember it was me, Drew, and I think Yuck or somebody or something. I was just, that we came from the O that day. We was in the 50s and then we all came over there. But, uh, uh, my point to say all that is that I knew Dre, you know what I mean? And, and before Thiz even popped up, I knew Dre, so I don't get down with Thiz, and I'm not a Thiz, but I support Thiz because that's my people's, right. you know what I mean? But do I Thiz and pop Thiz? I don't, you right. know, I, I blow chronic, but that's my people, so I support that, right. you know what I mean? So I'm like, Thiz is what it is because my, my, my folks is, is Thiz, but other than that, I'm Chill Beer. 
I'm Chair Bear, and we on some extra pure positive. Okay, what's, what's, what's Chair Bear? What's Chair? Uh, Chair Bear is anything fly and anything positive that you can think of. If you look at a fly female, like, ooh, baby doll, Chair. Them, them, them baby paper is Chair. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. she, she chose up Chair Bear. You know what I'm saying? Like, everything <laughs> is Chair. Up. See, see, now you using phrases, chose up. That don't sound like a L.A. nigga, right? Yeah. Like, just off top, that... That, that, that's a lot of bay terminology that you throw around, even in your music. Well, the funny thing is that I was told by, by, by a friend of mine, Raymond, back in the day, man, that uh, he, he was like, man, for an L.A. cat, man, you got a lot of finesse because you got that bay in you. And the funny thing is I know that because I spent a lot of time, even my first album, Hated By Many, I did a lot of representing and like, I say represent, but I did a lot of gang banging, repping my hood on the album. So you hear a lot of references to my neighborhood, even though I wasn't dissing, but you hear the bay, even like certain terminologies, right. I got soak it up or finesse or, you know, choosing or whatever it is or whatever, you know, but I came from that in my household. My mother is from the old, so coming from that, you know, I was born in Seattle, you know what I mean? So I was born there and then was raped, got sent to New Orleans, then to California, then back to New Orleans, then back to California, then back to Washington, then back to California. See, then that's what we got, you know, that's what we always had in common. You feel me? We, we able to talk to everybody because you, you do. Mr. Everywhere, everywhere, like yeah, Pac, yeah, yeah. you know, and we yeah. all, that was when, when Pac was breathing in here, and that's what me and you was talking about, man, when Me Against the World came out, we all have that in common, and that's why I rep the whole terminology of hood national. Right. But, but I remember back when you even told me, like, your finesse hand is very strong, and that's something that was very uh, dangerous for a lot of people because it's not regular for most people because they expect us, at least in the 90s, to be, oh, cuz, nigga, I, I'm gonna smoke that nigga, cuz. And right. and a bay cat that's would be true. like, yeah, because it, it extra and mean it, but a bay cat cat will tell you, okay, play, everything's cool, then come back around the block when you think everything is cool and blow your brains out. So so that, that that's the, like, like it was both G and aspects to break down on a G aspect of the Bay and L.A. because we got homies like Reese and other cats who's savs, who savages, you know what I mean? But but I looked at, at things as being more finesseful in the Bay and than they were in L.A. We were much more uh, uh, aggressive up front. When the Bay would be aggressive but not have to do it in your face, it, it, it it's more I can slick talk you about your money when we gonna rob you and, and break you, which is getting is done in the bay too. Right. But uh, but but for me though, like for me, I really take pride in being around at them times. You know what I mean? That in them days that it was more pure before the game was oversaturated, and I really learned. When you say that. oversaturated, uh, explain like like what you mean. Oversaturated with just what everybody named Mama rapping. You know what I mean? Like everybody. Like, I come from a, from an age like you do that, and. Even 40 and a lot of other cats were, even being in school, we was like the only cats that was rapping in school. In elementary, junior high school, and high school, and I didn't finish school. My school was in the streets, in South Central, and in the Bay, and everywhere else. You know what I mean? But, like, you know, I remember being three rappers in the school, and I was one of them. You know what I mean? This is seventh grade, eighth grade, where it wasn't it wasn't the thing to jump on the wagon. And that's why earlier I referred to when Master P came and gave me, gave me a t-shirt for West Coast Bad Boys, and I was in the studio with 40 at the time, that I saw him come up from Richmond and make that make a move to where after he did it a lot of other people because P wasn't the most dynamic rapper you know what I mean he was a street cat that, that that had game and made his way and made it pop and we love him we, we learn from from what he did and love him for it is the, is, is the shit but but um, oversaturated meaning I think after that point like 96 97 it seemed like a lot more people the bay to me was the mecca of the of the independent rap game and that was what really drove me. I went to a, a convention called Jack the Rapper in 1993. It's when I first met Tupac. You know what I mean? He bumped me. You know what I mean? And I remember I was like, who the fuck is bumping me? You know what I mean? I'm young, 16, 17, whatever. And uh, I got bumped. And the only thing I could see from the side of his face was his flag on his face. And I seen Thug Life on the bottom of Jack. And I was humbled. Like, that's Pac. And a lot of people, this would be pre me against the world and everything. And I knew Pac was the shit. It was funny because one, one of my records that I loved back then was uh, Trapped. And, and lo and behold, Ray Love wrote Trapped. You know what I mean? Which is very historical. A lot of cats don't know uh, about about them days and what it was in the Vine and what it was in Marin City. A lot of people that don't know. The Vine, the Vine, right? See, yeah. Yeah, e e even how Thug Life started. I remember the homie Freeze and a couple of other homies that that, that that would be like, you know, they would come up with Thug Life and then Pac ran with it. But you know, which is which is the bomb. But when I get back to saying oversaturated, is meaning that people were more pure. Like in the Motown days, you had to know how to sing to be signed to Motown, and Barry Gordy wasn't gonna see you. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the way it's portrayed to me. You had to be like the Jacksons or Diana Ross or the Temptations or whoever. You had to have it. The you it know what factor. I thought about when you said oversaturation. 
was how I, I remember when I used to come to LA. It was LA. It was South Central. It was it was sets. It was the Shaw. It was it, it had a look. It had its own sound, its own style. New York was New York. Now you go to New York. They got gang. They got Crips and Bloods out there. They got. Young Dre the truth, and I ain't hard to find. I'm hood national, homie, but it's West on mine. I represent 